Thank you for being part of our study. We are looking at Moment of Inertia, lecture number 19 by Dr. William Emanuel. Um, we are now looking, we have finished, we did the sides. We did the side for X, um, I, Y, and I, X for the inertia for the X and Y. The axis, the an axis through a corner. Okay, the axis is x and the axis is y, and a perpendicular to a plane. Okay, and so the plane is x and y, and we just solved for z. Okay, so z is our perpendicular. So what we have left to solve in this problem is a diagonal. So let's move on to our next. Okay, so if we look here, we'll see that we have a diagonal, which is U, going through this medium, this object. And we have V, which is going perpendicular <coughs> to this um, diagonal, which is going to give us our distance. This is going to give us our distance. And we have our formula here in matrix form our vector u and v as its functions of x and y okay we talked about the side finding i for x i x and i y and then we found that as to an axis and a corner so each one is a corner so the x and the y was a corner and we have one perpendicular to the plane the plane x y plane and we use Z. So now we're looking at our diagonal, as you can see here, is U, and we're using D as our distance. So the change in V is the distance from the diagonal U. So we want to find the moment of inertia along this diagonal. Okay, so we have our matrix here, which tells us that u is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 plus, I mean, x times x plus the square root of 2 times y. And our v, which lets us know here, is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times a minus x and a plus y. And as we said that v, this v is going to equal our distance. So we're going to use, need to square d, which is the same as squaring our v, which gives us our one half of our minus x plus y, that quantity squared. And when we multiply it out, Grouping terms, the one half times the quantity x squared plus y squared minus two x y. Okay, so we're trying to find the diagonal moment of inertia of the diagonal, and we use this formula d squared. Now that we know what d squared is, we're squaring it, and so what we have here is what we had from the other page, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And so when we actually perform this, we're going to divide it into three different um, sections. Okay, so our x squared be here times our dy. We have our minus 2xy times our dy d, dx plus our y squared d, dy dx. And so if we look at this term here, this is our y, our i sub y. Remember, we had um, you, you would eliminate your x 
if we're looking at x, we have to eliminate x, so this is y. Y, where is the z? We don't have a z because of its flatness, okay? So we just have our y component. And then we're going to put in the one half minus one half. I mean, our minus still got a one half times two, which takes that out. So now we just have x y dy dx plus one half. Okay, because the one half still is there, times the i x. And as you can see here, here we have our y squared. And so that would relate to the x. So now if we combine these two, the one half of the x and y components, which we found earlier, we still have left to integrate as our x, y. So if we take the integral of dy for y, we get y one half y squared. If we do the same thing for dx for x here, we're going to get one half x squared. And the limits from zero to a on x and on y. Now what we can do is we can combine these right here, our x and y, one half of the inertia for x and inertia for y. If we do that, then we get what we had for one half of moment of inertia for z, i z. Okay, now we still have to deal with this middle term, okay, that we had earlier. Now, middle term, one down, we plug in our, for a, we get one half a squared times one half a squared. The lower limits go out to zero. Okay, now, um, the z was two-thirds, and so the one-half and the two will cancel. That leaves us with one-third a squared m. Okay, and now if we multiply this out, one-half times one-half, and a to the fourth. And so remember, we mentioned, um, we showed earlier that m is equal to what? To a. So we're going to take... Um, a squared, we're going to take this a squared and we're going to make it an m. So this will be a squared m. That's what this will be. So these will be in the same format. So we have here, we need a common denominator of 12. So we have to multiply this 4 over 4. So that's 4 a squared m minus, we have to multiply this by 3 over 3, 3 minus a squared m. Remember this, convert this a4 to a squared m. All divided by 12, so we subtract the 4 from the 3, we get 1 12th of a squared m. For our, what? Diagonal. Okay, we're around 8 minutes in, and we're going to come back and we're going to look at this next equation, our next problem that we're going to look at. And we're going to find the mass we're going to find these different vectors, vector x, vector y. This here is not a vector. This is a scalar. We're going to find this scalar, and then we're going to find this vector here for the moment of inertia for x. Okay, you return back. It's four, part three.